Whoa, some super <laughs> exciting news here. We have the Jabba kit reveal and developers insights. Um, this is actually here a lot sooner than I was expecting. I thought we wouldn't see this until the Boosh um, marquee event was over, but no, we still have eight days on that. And here's Jabba's kit reveal. Now Jabba could still come out after the Boosh event, but the kit reveal is here way sooner than I thought. This is actually super exciting. I've been stalking the forums just for this to come out. So sweet. Job of the Hunt, GL, Dark Side Bounty Hunter. He counts as a bounty hunter? I guess so. I just thought he'd have the hot cartel tag only. Highlights. Powerful crime boss who uses the unique buff hired muscle to give him the upper hand. There will be no bargain with this mighty hut and the assistance of his ravenous yank uh, rancor pet. Employs the most notorious scum in the galaxy. Um, Han should be on here too, technically, because Han was in his employ. I mean, the whole <laughs> the whole first couple of movies are... Actually, the whole original trilogy is about him being indebted to, ha to Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. There you go. Hey, Hall Jabba. Here's the cunning and ruthless crime lord. Jabba the Hutt has slithered his way into the hall table. I know he could slither because he's like a big slug, but he's usually just kind of sitting there on a platform because he's so fat. Prepare for a life of nefarious acts. Hey, nefarious. Nefarious connections. That's, uh... That is um, Count Dooku's leader ability, right? Hmm, they're, they're like using the word nefarious. The basics. Jabba lifts and supports bounty hunter, hot cartel, and smuggler characters throughout his kit. With an emphasis on hot cartel allies. Obviously, that would make sense, considering he is a hut. <laughs> and the hot cartel was invented because of him. <laughs> While an ally with the My Kinda Scum buff is present on the team, Jabba can't be directly targeted by enemy abilities, but is still subjected to area of effect damage. Okay, so that's just like uh, Mon Mothma, kinda. Um, because of Jabba's enormity, he prevents allied summons and can't be used in the ally slot. Yeah, I think they're coming up with a new... Uh, functionality larger larger characters or something which they said that before you can't have summons and stuff which is fine summons are only something that you add on during like you know the, the, the career path if you will of the light side and dark side paths and the cantina and stuff and typically the summons are usually worthless you can do the battle without the summon it just helps to have that extra sixth character to give you a little edge but you don't need it <laughs> unique attributes hired muscle provides an initial benefit on the character's role but once it expires, it will bestow additional buffs to allies depending on their affiliation. During raids, Jabba's contract is fulfilled immediately at the start of ba battle, which provides a variety of buffs, I mean benefits for bounty hunter, hot cartel, and smuggler allies, and when fully upgraded, will increase his ultimate charge gains. During raids? Okay, that's a weird time, but still, that's pretty cool. The contract is immediately fulfilled. So no more dicking around trying to meet the requirements for the contract. It's right out the gate. Which that means um, somebody like um, Mando has his Annihilate, or whatever you call it, Disintegrate, available right out the gate. Now, it's not like he's going to be able to annihilate a raid boss and all of a sudden, oh god, I took care of him. But still, I'm sure that hits pretty decently. It's kind of like Nihilus is Annihilate. Yeah, it doesn't kill anybody, but I'm sure it still does fair damage. I haven't used it in a while in a raid, so I can't say for certain, but I'm sure it does fair enough damage as the trade-off for not actually killing somebody. So that's pretty sick. Through his leader ability, while enemies are inflicted with at least one thermal detonator, health and protection recovery effects will be reduced. Okay. I mean, I guess they can still have health and recovery, uh, health and protection recovery, but it's going to be a little bit less, so that's helpful. It says through his leader ability. Well, I'd hope you're, if you have Java on your team, he's in the leader slot. <laughs> be weird if he wasn't. I think the only GL that it makes sense to have on the team that's not in the leader slot is um, Master Luke. I think he's the only one that it kind of doesn't make a difference. You can you can put him in a squad with someone else as the leader. Like, sometimes I've seen him. I know I personally use him with, with Jedi Knight as the leader. And I've also seen squads that use Jedi uh, Revan as the leader. So, he's the only one that you can get away with that. But everyone else, you want them in the leader slot. It's kind of stupid otherwise. <laughs> Uh, let's go. Inspiration. Gee, I wonder what the inspiration would be. Huh. 
Jabba's short time in the opening scenes of Return of the Jedi made a huge impact on all of us. We have been looking for an opportunity to get him into the game and at a physical size and in-game power level befitting the crime lord of Tatooine. Couple things to say here. One, although we do see him for a short time in the Return of the Jedi, we at least know about him ahead of time. We hear a lot of how Han's talking about him, how he owes money to Jabba, so at least you're kind of familiar with the name, and then we finally see him in Return of the Jedi. It's not like Boosh or, or um, what was the Lando in disguise? Skiff uh, Guard or whatever? Those are very short-term, short-lived. We don't hear anything about them, they're just kind of there in Return of the Jedi, and then they do what they need to do to help Han, and then boom, they're gone, and they're back to being Lando and Leia. At least there's a build-up for Jabba, you know what I mean? He might be short-lived, but we hear about him a lot. Second thing is, they say that they wanted to modify his size to try to make him be, like, uh, practical for... You know, he's a big, big guy, so they wanted him to be big in the game. But I'm like, what about other big characters that we have that you just made normal size, like Wampa? Wampa's good size. He's he's a monster. He, he's, he'd be like a bear, kind of. I mean, I guess he's not as big as... Um, Jabba, but still, you know, he's he would be big, and who else? I mean, the Rancor they did good, because the characters are all scaled down, so he looks small. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. He seems to be hell-bent on Jabba being big, but, like, I'm sure there's other big characters that I'm forgetting as well, that they just made, like, normal size like everyone else. Nearly every discipline in the studio, QA, R, Engineering, and Design, came together with ideas, solutions, edge cases, and refinements in order to bring the first large size character to the hall tables. <sighs> engineering? What does engineering have to do with video game design? Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm questioning this because I'm an engineer. <laughs> so, like, I'm just thinking, like, what, what would I do with the game? But, I guess, why this is confusing me is because I'm thinking about my discipline, like, what I do all day would have absolutely nothing to do with video game design, but I'm sure there's some kind of other type of engineering, like software engineer or something. QA? Okay, yeah, QA seems to be a very easy department at CG. <laughs> a lot of trash gets through. Anyhow, Jabba's Ultimate was a no-brainer for us to include. The Rancor was truly the most terrifying weapon at his disposal, an ultimate source of entertainment for his court. Dropping an enemy into the Rancor Pit was something we wanted to put into the player's hands. Jabba is not only visually distinct, but his booming voice speaking in Huttonese, along with salacious B crumbs and infectious laugh, will have you grinning every time you hear it. He saw Wopa da guy, la compa he ho ho ho. I'm wondering though, so it seems like the um, the ultimates have, they've always been kind of cool until recently, like you had the first couple, they changed their pose and stuff, they gained cool bonuses, um, the second round, those characters actually changed their look, I mean C goes from being in his prosthetic stuff, whatever you want to call it, his life support, to being the Gucci jacket, you know, the Gucci, Gucci robes. Or Luke goes from his old style to when he's projecting himself as younger. And then the last batch was just boring. Like, what even happens <laughs> when Lord Vader or Kenobi go ultimate? Like, nothing. It kind of zooms in on, the, on them. You see, like, effects that look like the ground is getting more intense because they're using the Force. And then it's the same. Everything's the same. So their ultimates are kind of boring and disappointing. But it sounds like Jabba's could at least be fun again. You know, it's going to be like a little cutscene. You watch the character that you're fighting fall into the pit with the Rancor. Could be a fun, uh, could be the best, possibly, depending on how they animate it and such. Could be the best um, GL Ultimate moment. Hopefully, that'd be cool. Anyhow, strategy tips. Jabba is capable of ignoring taunt during his turn and can also call an ally to assist with his basic or inflict crippling debuffs with his other abilities. This combination can prove lethal to your opponent. Okay, I'm wondering. It says he can ignore taunt, which is cool, but I'm feeling like Jabba doesn't have any actual attacks. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe they make Salacious B or something have an attack. 
but I feel like he's kind of like a Mon Mothma. There's no actual attack, so it's like ignoring taunt doesn't matter. But at the same time, it says he can call an assist, so maybe that's where it matters. Like you call your assist to go after X character instead of taunting character. We'll see. Although Jabba can't be directly targeted by enemies during their turn while an ally with my kind of scum is present, area of effect attacks will still inflict potentially lethal damage upon him. Adding health through mods can help keep Jabba in the fight. Yeah, this is exactly the same as like Mon Mothma. Or even 3PO, sort of, or, or Hermit Yoda, because you know they go under stealth usually. Like they just become unattackable. I think the only one so far that you can attack whenever you want is um what's his name? Oh, the tech guy. I always forget his name. Whatever the heck his name is. Why the heck do I always forget this? Wat Tambor. Jeez. Him. He's the only one that I feel like you can go after. Um, fact. Does Jabba's ability, his high exaltedness, stack with itself? Well, we have not looked at the kit reveal yet, so this makes absolutely no sense. But whatever. We'll just keep reading it. <laughs> If a character qualifies for multiple of the tags, do they receive the buff multiple times? No, a character can only benefit from his, his wow from his high exaltedness once, no matter how many different triggering tags that unit has. Does the revives from the illustrious work in GAC and Territory Wars for attacks against a defending Java squad after the first? No, units defeated in previous attacks are unable to be revived in subsequent attacks against that squad. So it sounds like he has some kind of revive. That's cool. Like I said, I haven't looked at the kit reveal yet. That comes next. I always do this first, then the kit reveal. That's why that's my sign-off. <laughs> um, what is Meathead's obsession with the word bestow? He feels like a mighty knight in yield times. Um, what? Okay, what kind of weird nonsense was that? We're, we're, fact is supposed to be for serious stuff about Java. Why are you putting something stupid like that in there? The other thing is, I wouldn't say what's his obsession with the word bestow. I mean, I'm not even paying attention. Have I said that a million times? Or was that in the kit reveal that he says bestow a lot? I don't know. But what I have noticed is he's always doing they when he's talking about a gendered character. And it's making me annoyed. Stop saying they, dickhead. Like when he was talking about Boosh. They do this. But no, it's she. You know Leia's a woman. She, idiot. Or um, when they were talking about the new Lando. They. Lando is a guy. He is a he. So when he does X, not they. So why is this dickbag doing that all the time is the real question. I don't care about bestow. Anyways, they don't separate these anymore, but that is what would be the equivalency of the developer's insights. Even though this says kit reveal, it's because the kit reveal is right after what we just looked at. So thanks for checking this out with me. And hopefully, I really hope, you go check out that kit reveal because... It always is the better video, I say, but this time it is definitely the better video. You want to see that kit. Who cares about these developers' insights? <laughs> we want to know that kit. What's Jabba all about? What's he going to bring to his squad? So yeah, be sure to check that one out. It is always uploaded right after this one. So look, one video over, and boom, there it is. And yeah, until that one, I said see ya.